Indiana Jones is everyone's favorite daring archaeologist. But just how much do you know about his video game adventures? In this video I'll examine every single release, both good and bad, that the iconic hero has appeared in. Harrison Ford's on-screen exploits as Indiana Jones helped turn him into one of the biggest movie icons of the 80s. Indy also turned out to be perfectly at home on the small screen, with a large number of developers from Atari to LucasArts eager to evoke his escapades for a whole generation of gamers. While his digital adventures haven't always been as successful as his cinematic ones, they cover a wide range of genres, from coin-op hits to text adventures, and has proven that his capers don't always need the backing of a well-known film to make them enjoyable. And let's not forget that without his original films and video gaming adventures, we probably wouldn't have Rick Dangerous, Lara Croft or Nathan Drake. So join me as I look back at the multitude of video games starring everyone's favorite whip-wielding adventurer. Just don't call him Junior. Don't call me Junior. Raiders, Raiders of the Lost, Lost Ark. Ark. Ignore the archaic visuals, as Howard Scott Warshaw's game is a surprisingly accomplished debut of the iconic archaeologist. Loosely based on the hit movie, Raiders of the Lost Ark was the first ever licensed video game and has the intrepid explorer seeking out the fabled Ark of the Covenant. The most interesting aspect of the game is that both joysticks are used by the player, one to move Jones and use an item and the other to select and drop items. It seems clunky today, and it is, but it was a great way of getting around the Atari 2600's limited single button joystick. A classic adventure that everyone should play. Indiana, Indiana Jones, Jones in the Lost, Lost Kingdom. Kingdom. In this second adventure is best forgotten. The bold explorer faces his biggest challenges yet, frustrating collision detection, woefully designed stages and clunky controls. Mindscape, at least, went for a variety by having Jones navigate a series of different rooms, but the sloppy execution kills its stone dead. The rendition of the theme tune at the game's beginning is its high point, and it never really recovers. I almost wish I received the same fate as the baddies at the end of Raiders, so that our freshly melted eyeballs might never look upon it again. Indiana, Indiana Jones, Jones and the, and the Temple, Temple of Doom. Doom. An enjoyable arcade romp that split into several sections. The first sees you avoiding the thuggy cult and snakes while rescuing a number of children. You then take part in an exciting minecart chase before facing off against a fireball throwing molar ram and snatching back the fabled Shankara stones. Well paced and with slick visuals and smart digitized speech, Temple of Doom was a fantastic arcade game that received a bunch of decent home ports. Indiana Jones in Revenge of the Ancients Mindscape took another stab at the franchise and implanted Jones into a text adventure. The end results were pretty good, thanks to a decent parser, atmospheric locations and a solid storyline that saw Indy traveling to Mexico and recovering a powerful artifact from under the noses of pursuing Nazis. Just sitting on the cusp of proper graphic adventures, he proved to be a diverting time waster and easily captured the character it was based upon, even if it didn't quite deliver the thrills and spills. This same formula was applied two years prior to a Rambo-themed video game, Rambo First Blood Part 2 in 1985. Check my Rambo video games retrospective to know more. Indiana, Indiana Jones, Jones and the, and the Temple, Temple of Doom. Doom. 
Despite sharing similar gameplay, this is sufficiently different to the arcade game to warrant its own mention. Indy must go around levels rescuing kids and avoiding enemies but can pick up and use guns, keys, swords and map pieces, although switching between them is amazingly annoying. Later levels allows us to jump on minecarts and conveyor belts, but it's nowhere near as action-packed as the arcade original. Indiana, Indiana Jones, Jones and, and the Last, Last Crusade, Crusade, the action, action game. game. This next offering is based on the third film and boasts great looking visuals and plenty of variety in its five levels. It's hard though, so hard in fact, that I'd bet Indy would rather pose in a picture with a giant anaconda than play the thing itself. Despite the high difficulty, I often return to it. It still remains as one of my favorite video games on the ZX Spectrum, on the Amiga and on the Mega Drive. Indiana Jones, Indiana Jones and the and Last, Last Crusade, Crusade, the graphic, graphic adventure. adventure. This often overlooked adventure lacks the punch of the later Fate of Atlantis, but is a nonetheless excellent outing for Henry Jones Jr. Created by David Fox, Noah Falstein and Ron Gilbert, it's a witty offering that utilizes the scum engine to annoyingly good effect and follows the film so well that you can use lines from it to solve some of its actual puzzles. The PC version is easily the best, but this isn't Indy's best point and click adventure. Indiana, Indiana Jones, Jones and the Lost Crusade. Crusade This NES exclusive is an ambitious release featuring a number of different mini-games as Indy attempts to follow the film's plot. There are multiple choice options, overhead bike chases, side-on fighting sections, sliding puzzles, standard platforming and plenty more to keep Indy fans occupied. The visuals are a little flickery of times and the controls aren't the tightest, but there's an insane amount of entertainment packed into this release. Indiana, Indiana Jones, Jones and the, and the Fate, Fate of Atlantis. Atlantis Quite simply, the greatest Indiana Jones adventure ever made, period. Created while LucasArts was at the height of its powers, it's an epic point-and-click adventure that had it all, including stunning visuals, a colorfully witty script, solid voice acting on the later CD-ROM versions, an entertaining storyline and plenty of brilliant puzzles. In fact, one of the greatest strengths of Atlantis was that it's effectively three games in one, with the player getting to choose from three distinct paths, each with their own puzzles, locations and cutscenes. The Wits path is heavily puzzle based, the Fists path sees Indy getting into plenty of scuffles, while the Team path sees Indy teaming up with sidekick Sophia Hapgood. Sophia turns out to be every bit as gutsy as Raiders Marion Ravenwood, while the storyline throughout plays to the strengths of the franchise, with a suitably majestic MacGuffin to uncover, plenty of Nazis to defeat, and a globe-trotting adventure that cartwheels from a dig site in Iceland to the back alleys and marketplaces of Algiers before finally ending in the Fable Atlantis. Just about the same size as the stone disc. Masterminded by Hal Barwood. The story of Fate of Atlantis was superb, although it's worth noting that Barwood had already written a number of screenplays, including Steven Spielberg's The Sugarland Express, before tackling Atlantis. Barwood would work on three more Indiana Jones games, but his debut remains his best and highlights everything that was great about LucasArts point and click adventures and Hindi himself. Ah! Indiana Jones, Jones and the and Fate of Atlantis, Atlantis, the action game. Isometric adventures were all the rage back in the day, so it's no surprise to learn that Indy got in on the act as well. It follows the plot of the Dark Horse comics, 
and is a fun romp with a novel touch of being able to switch between indie and his sidekick Sophia Hapgood. It starts off slow with a track around a casino, but things soon pick up and there's a fair amount of scrapping as you progress, ensuring this second Atlantis game certainly lives up to its promise of being an action game. It's worth noting though that the 8-bit conversions are pretty ropey in comparison. The Young Indiana Jones Chronicles If you squint, Young Indy looks a little like the Simon Belmont sprite from the NES Castlevania series. Sadly, that's about the only thing I like about this distinctly dull action game from Jaleco. While it plays at a relatively fast pace, it's simply too hard for its own good due to questionable collision detection, unfair bosses and harsh level design. In fact, now that I think about it, it's about as good as every other game based on the young Indiana Jones Chronicles, meaning I'd better write about something else entirely. Instruments of Chaos starring Young Indiana Jones Poor old Mega Drive owners, SNES fans got the enjoyable Indiana Jones Greatest Adventures while they got stuck with one of the worst games in the franchise's history. Things start off promisingly enough in one of five different locations that range from England to India and Tibet, but once you start playing, things slide downhill like Indy in a giant inflatable raft. Everything about Instruments of Chaos ranges from average to awful. While the backgrounds are decent depictions of their locations, the animation of Indy and his enemies is laughable. The controls are terrible, with Indy bouncing off enemies often at the cost of a life, while the soundtrack will soon drive you insane. I'd rather eat a bowl of chilled monkey brains than play this sorry mess of a game. Chilled monkey brain. Indiana Jones, Jones Greatest, greatest adventures. adventures While far from perfect due to a high difficulty level, this is easily the best 16-bit indie action game. Powered by the Super Star Wars engine, it's an enjoyable romp through the first three films and filled with a number of excellent Mode 7 set pieces that range from a dash down a mountainside to being chased by the famous boulder from Raiders. As with the Super Star Wars games, the difficulty will be a little too high for some, but the inventive bosses, excellent visuals and superb audio will ensure that you keep plugging away at it. Indiana, Indiana Jones, Jones and his desktop, desktop adventures. adventures The box art is a little misleading, as desktop adventures has nothing in common with Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. It's a cute if basic adventure game that has a deformed version of Indy exploring a randomly generated game world set in 30s America. Unlike every other game in the series, Desktop Adventures was designed to run windowed so that the player could perform additional tasks on their system. Like working perhaps? It's not an exceptionally deep game, but it's fun all the same. Indiana, Indiana Jones, Jones and the Infernal Machine. Machine This was the first 3D Jones game, and he certainly had his work cut out. Lara Croft had already beaten him to the punch and was already on her fourth adventure before Jones caught up with her. Fortunately, he acquits himself well, and while it looks a little empty in places, it's a surprisingly good 3D debut that has some decent combat plenty of clever puzzles and some rossing tunes. There's a great plot as well, most likely because Al Barwood was once again on director duties and only an occasionally wayward camera lets things down. The Game Boy Color version is essentially the same game in 2D with slightly more puzzles. Indiana Jones and the Emperor's Tomb 
Empress Tomb is a solid, if rather derivative, Tomb Raider clone. It is powered by the same engine that the Collective used for Buffy the Vampire Slayer, meaning there's a fair amount of scrapping as Indy fights his way through all manner of exotic locations. While it scores for its authentic plot and interesting characters, it's let down by some tough puzzles and an infuriating camera. It's a solid enough adventure, but isn't as enjoyable as Infernal Machine. Lego Indiana Jones, the original adventures. This is probably the best indie action game made so far. Yes, it's aimed squarely at the younger end of the market, but there are more than enough gags, combined with solid gameplay, aimed at those that love the original films to keep everyone happy. Just as Pixar is the master of keeping two distinctly different audiences entertained, so too is Traveler's Tales. Yes, there's a huge emphasis on collecting, but the tripsing around for studs, chests and other secrets is actually fun. The addition of phobias and riding vehicles adds neatly to the core gameplay first introduced in the Star Wars games, while Indy is able to use his whip to traverse the levels and battle with enemies. Spread across all three original films and featuring the franchise's usual drop-in, drop-out multiplayer mechanics, LEGO Indiana Jones The Original Adventures is an excellent game that does the man with the hat proud. LEGO Indiana, Indiana Jones, Jones 2, 2 The Adventure the continues. continues. In addition to featuring a sprawling adventure based on the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, Traveler's Tales also has brand new levels based on the original three films, improves the multiplayer with split-screen action and throws in a level editor for good measure. It's not a huge improvement gameplay-wise after the original game, but it still comes highly recommended. Indiana, Indiana Jones, Jones and the, and the Staff, Staff of Kings. Kings Indiana Jones and the Staff of Kings is nothing more than a bland by the numbers action game. It has no redeeming features and makes little use of the Wii's unique controller. The Wii version is simply the best due to featuring an inoffensive cooperative mode and, best of all, the inclusion of Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis which works surprisingly well with the Wii Remote. Indiana, Indiana Jones, Jones Adventure World, World. Then it must be. Sadly, the last Indiana Jones game to appear doesn't even exist anymore, as it was cancelled by developer Zynga in late 2012. One and only in it was originally planned as a standalone game, until Zynga entered a deal with LucasArts. The bright, cartoony, isometric setting was filled with all manner of quests to complete, but the gameplay was hampered by an annoying energy system that greatly diminished playing time, forcing you to hassle friends to join in so you could refill your meter. Interestingly, this was Hal Barwood's last involvement with the franchise, having handled its narrative design. Play Indiana Jones Adventure World today. Indiana, Indiana Jones, Jones and the Obscure, Obscure Games. Games. Indiana Jones Legend. Be Considering the popularity of Indiana Jones, it should come as no surprise to learn that these adventures have cropped up in all sorts of places. When the Adventures of Young Indiana Jones was released on DVD, the huge box set included three educational adventures. Shape history. The three games are all based on various Indiana Jones adventures. Young Indy also has a number of mobile adventures, courtesy of developer Universomo. Crystal Skull is a loosely adaptation of the awful Shia LaBeouf starring movie, while Indiana Jones and the Lost Puzzles is a tile-based puzzler that sees you avoiding snakes, boulders and other hazards. 
I'd also like to take this opportunity to point out two Indiana Jones pinball tables, although you'll need deep pockets to procure them. Indiana Jones The Pinball Adventure was released in 1993 by Williams and is a greatest hit of the three films, while Stern's 2008 Indiana Jones game updates the saga and includes references to Crystal Skull. Indiana Jones and the Cancelled Games LucasArts is no stranger to cancelling games, so it should come as no surprise to learn that a number of unfinished indie games exist. Garden of Life was the indie project Al Barwood was hired to work on before it became Fate of Atlantis. Atlantis had two sequels planned, Indiana Jones and the Iron Phoenix and Indiana Jones and the Spear of Destiny. Iron Phoenix got 15 months into development when a nervous Lucasfilm concerned about how the game would fare in Germany due to its neo-Nazism cancelled it. A Sega CD version of Fate of Atlantis was also cancelled. By far the most impressive indie game is one known only as Indie 2007. It looked to be an epic adventure for Xbox 360 and PS3 utilizing the Euphoria engine but it was quietly cancelled, with LucasArts concentrating on Star Wars The Force Unleashed. Some of its assets were used to create the Staff of Kings instead. As you all are aware by now, the fifth installment in the movie franchise will be arriving in July of 2022, and Bethesda, now part of Xbox Game Studios, has announced a new Indiana Jones video game that will be arriving to, at least, the Xbox series of consoles and the PC via Game Pass. There's no doubt in my mind that a PS5 version will also pop out, as well as for Nintendo fans on a brand new system arriving later down the road. We're all still waiting for more details on that. Hope you've enjoyed this video, so if you did, you know the drill. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you all in my next video. Cheers!